This is the next video in the chapter on chemical bonding and molecular geometry. We are ready to talk about how valence electrons play a role in bonding by drawing Lewis structures. So let's review how this connects to last time. In the past, we used shorthand electron configuration, sometimes called noble gas configuration. We wrote it in shorthand to emphasize the importance of the valence electrons. Those were the only electrons that were included in the notation after the noble gas in brackets. So valence electrons is what we are gonna be all about from this point on. So for example, sodium, Sodium is here, the beginning of the third row of the periodic table. The previous noble gas was neon at the end of the second row. So we emphasize it's one valence electron by writing neon 3s1. So now we're going to use Lewis symbols and Lewis structures highlight the role of those valence electrons in bonding. Valence electrons are going to be our new favorite thing. We're gonna be talking about them a lot. And so you might see me abbreviate them by writing V dot E for valence electrons. So the simplest version of a Lewis structure is a Lewis symbol, which is a Lewis structure for a single atom. And you may have seen these before, if you've ever taken chemistry before, in a Lewis symbol, we use one dot for each valence electron around the symbol for an atom. And that is up to eight valence electrons is the most we can include in a picture. So the way we draw this for sodium, which has an electron configuration of neon 3s1, is it has one valence electron in its outermost shell. And so we represent that one valence electron with a single dot next to the sodium. And the nice part about using this type of Lewis symbol is that if we draw something, use another element from the same group like potassium, it emphasizes that they have the same valence electron configuration. Potassium is right below sodium. It has uh, electron configuration of 4s1 for its valence electrons. And so it also just has a single dot. So we're emphasizing those outermost electrons in the structure. If we move to the element next to sodium, that would be magnesium. Magnesium has an electron configuration of neon 3s2. So we need to include two valence electrons in our structure. Sometimes we put them next to each other, one on the side and one on the top. Sometimes we put them one on the side and one on the other side, depends on your book. You can look at the next one, sodium, magnesium. The next one in the third row is aluminum, group 15. The configuration of neon, 3s2, 3p1. So there are three valence electrons here. So we'll put three valence electrons in our figure. So you can start to see the pattern here. We'll just go ahead and do uh, all of the elements in that row. And we will do the number of valence electrons for each of them. Let's see, so we've got sodium. 
magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Those are in group one and two. Well, then aluminum is in group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And remember, we learned how to figure out the number of valence electrons according to the group number, the same as the usual charge. So there's going to be one valence electron here, two valence electrons. Uh, this one is going to have three because the other 10 go in the D block, three valence electrons, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So these main group elements in groups one and two and 13 through 18, we can easily predict the number of valence electrons that they have. And we can draw their Lewis symbol with dots. So we've got sodium, magnesium, aluminum has three, silicon has four. So now we've got one dot on each side. Phosphorus has five, so that's the first one. We're gonna double up on one side. Sulfur has six, so we'll double up on two sides. Chlorine has seven, so we double up on three sides. And argon has eight, so we have a full valence shell. We have two electrons on all four sides. And we know from our talk about orbital filling that this isn't a super accurate way of representing the valence electrons, but it's good enough for where we are right now. We can also form ions. These are just neutral atoms. We can use these Lewis symbols to represent the formation of a cation. For example, sodium likes to form sodium plus by losing that one valence electron. So we can show neutral sodium with its one valence electron indicated. And when it becomes a cation, it loses that one electron and what's left behind is a sodium plus. And we'll put it in a box because in theory, there would be some electrons here, uh, but we're highlighting the fact that that shell is empty. Sodium now has an empty valence shell, which means that the next shell, which is full, would be considered the official valence shell. Or we can form an anion. Anion means we add an electron. So we can use something like chlorine. So chlorine has seven valence electrons. And if we add an electron to that, we form a chlorine anion, which has a negative charge, but it has eight valence electrons. So we'll put that in a box so that we can show that the charge refers to that whole thing. So we can draw Lewis symbols for single neutral atoms and for single ions. We can even use, even use it to indicate ionic bonding. We talked before how ionic bonding occurs when elements, one metal and one non-metal element come close enough to each other that they give or take electrons from each other and they end up forming charged species that are attracted to each other. So we can represent that using Lewis symbols. And this time, We'll draw the electron for sodium in a different color so we can keep track of where it goes. Okay, so what happens when these two get close to each other is sodium gives that electron to the chlorine and chlorine takes it. So this is not a sharing relationship. This is a give and take. And we end up with the same sorts of symbols that we had before. So we have sodium with that empty outer shell with a positive charge. 
which is next to chlorine with a negative charge with a filled valence shell. And the last electron filling that valence shell is the red one that came from the sodium. And it's not technically uh, a molecule, so we don't draw them as bonded. We just draw them as having charges and next to each other is the most correct way to do that. So we've learned how to do ionic bonding. And in the next video, we'll use Lewis symbols to talk about covalent bonding and how to show the sharing of electrons in those molecules.